The Southwest Missouri State University Department of Geography Geology presents Land and Life in the Ozarks. This course is one of several units of study offered in Ozark Regional Studies at SMSU and is designed to enhance appreciation of the cultural heritage of this region. The lecture today deals with an important aspect of the Ozark economy, the tourist and recreation industry. Uh, in today's lecture, I want to cover three points. Uh, first, the location of the Ozarks with re reference to its uh, tourist market. Then I'll talk about the economic importance of the tourist recreation industry, uh, focusing primarily on Missouri where data is available. And then we'll do a reconnaissance of the major tourist and recreation attractions in the Ozark region by uh, tourist recreation region as outlined in the text. To, by way of uh, perspective, I should uh, think uh, mentions that the uh, recreation industry really began before the turn of the century in the Ozarks. In the 1880s and 1890s, uh, a number of uh, health spas were opened in the region. Uh, this was a time when uh, springs and uh, spas were popular in the United States. Uh, it seemed that each uh, spring, uh, virtually in the United States, uh, tried to ape the uh, tremendous development at Saratoga Springs in New York. I suppose the most successful of these uh, spas was Eureka Springs in Arkansas. And in this slide, we see an early view of Eureka Springs. Really, uh, I think this picture was taken in the 1930s. But you can see some of the bath bathhouses in the downtown area. And of course, a large and rather elegant hotel was built at Eureka Springs. The railroads, of course, brought people into these resorts. And uh, uh, float fishing became popular on the White River and on the James River uh, before the, the, the White River was dammed and before the James River was polluted. Uh, the real era of tourist development began in the 1920s when the automobile, uh, which in, if we can see the next slide, I managed to find an old uh, picture of the open touring car in the Ozarks, uh, but the automobile opened up the area and as roads were improved, of course, tourism became important. Uh, the limiting factor, of course, was the uh, small number of good roads that, they, that the tourists could, uh, could travel on. Next, I'd like to talk a little bit about the Ozark tourism uh, resource base in relation to the market area. Uh, it is, the, the Ozarks is the only hill district in the midsection of the United States, and this is important uh, because <clears throat> for the flatlanders around the Ozarks, it's a long ways to travel to a similar location. It's a long ways back to the Appalachians in the east and quite a distance uh, farther to the Rocky Mountains to the west. Uh, if we could have the next slide then, this is a map that shows the location of national parks and uh, national forests in the United States. You've seen it before, but you can see that uh, the Ozark region is really the only area uh, where a lot of public land is available and it's close to uh, large population centers too. So we're talking about 800 miles to the east to find similar uh, kinds of uh, open land and likewise uh, you all the way to the Rocky Mountains to the west. Uh, in the next slide we see uh, the Ozark region in relation to major cities. Uh, within a day's drive and here on this map, you see Kansas City, uh, St. Louis, uh, Tulsa in the southwest. But within a day's drive are cities like uh, Chicago, uh, fairly convenient day's drive to the, to the Ozarks, uh, Little Rock to the south, Memphis, uh, Oklahoma City, Wichita, Topeka, uh, Dallas, Fort Worth. So a large population um, potential market, at least, around the Ozarks. Now, 
as far as the economic importance of the Ozarks, uh, of tourism to the, and recreation to the Ozarks, uh, it's difficult to get data that pertains to the Ozarks. The, the reason being is that nobody bothers to collect it for the Ozark region per se. Uh, state tourism commissions collect data on tourists. And surprisingly, uh, they really weren't that interested in doing much research until fairly recent times. Uh, the best data that I could find by writing to the tourism commissions and in the various states in the Ozarks uh, came from Missouri. Uh, prior to, that is in former years, the tourism commissions functioned primarily as information uh, agencies and advertising agencies of the state. But uh, I think we can stra extrapolate some of the data from Missouri and make it apply to the Ozarks. And if we can have the next slide, we see that the origin of um, tourists in Missouri uh, comes from states adjacent to it. Uh, in fact, Missouri is her own best customer. 40.7% of the tourist visitors in Missouri are Missourians. But I think that if you look at this map a little uh, in some detail, you'll see that the largest numbers are from states with large populations, such as um, Illinois, which pr provides 15% of the total. Uh, but then, on the other hand, you have states such as Kentucky and Tennessee, which supply fewer visitors because they have similar recreational resources. There's really no reason for a Kentuckian or Tennessean to come to the Ozarks uh, for lakes and hills because he has the same type of resources available in his home state. Uh, likewise, on the other hand, Kansas, which had um, uh, has a smaller population, has no tourist recreation resources similar to the Ozarks, so they send a substantial uh, percentage of the visitors to the, to the state of Missouri, and presumably most of them, or many of them at least, go to the Ozark region. This graph that you're looking at now uh, was compiled by the federal government, and, and uh, it shows the um, demand, projected demand, for various types of tourist recreation activities. The three uh, stages on each graph there, or each line, represents the level of uh, recreational use in 1960, in 1976, and then projected to the year 2000. And just uh, going from the top, and without putting in figures, uh, we see that, uh, or I'll just read the categories from the top, uh, driving for pleasure, um, then uh, swimming, um, the next category is um, outdoor sports, then um, picnicking, fishing, hunting, camping, and boating. I think if you look at the graph in each case, uh, you see that by the year 2000, the uh, usage of, in each of these cat categories will have at least doubled and sometimes tripled. Well, what this means, I guess, is that since the Ozarks has uh, good tourist or good resources in these categories, the future for tourism and recreation is apparently, apparently uh, bright over the long run. In the next uh, slide, we see uh, statistics um, which don't show up altogether good here. Uh, in Missouri, there were 28,800,000 visitors or travelers in Missouri during 1974. And this is the most recent data that I could obtain. Now, the, the statistics for their uh, expenditures are, are impressive. The average tourist in Missouri spent uh, $16.50 a day. Um, the average stay was four days, and the group or the family uh, average size was three. Well, if you do a little multiplication, uh, $16.50 times four days times three people, that's $187.50 per tourist visit by a family visiting uh, the state. In the next slide, we see that the gross sales from tourism is now over $2 billion in Missouri. Now, uh, I would assume that much of this is in the Ozarks uh, region because that's where a lot of the tourist attractions are found. Uh, notice that the increase since 1972 is, is substantial. Uh, and this is a growing part of the or sector of the economy, and perhaps partly responsible for the population growth that has occurred in the Ozarks. And in the next uh, slide, we see some interesting statistics as to how the tourist dollar is spent. It is spent 
or spread uh, fairly widely. Uh, transportation accounts for 36.4 cents of the tourist dollar that is spent. Food, 21 cents. Lodging, 17.5 cents. Gifts, six tenths of a cent. Entertainment, 6.3 cents of every tourist dollar. And incidentals, which would include, I suppose, fishing equipment, boating equipment, and hunting equipment, and so on, 18.4 cents of the tourist dollar. Uh, the next slide shows that the out-of-state visitors uh, spent uh, $900 million of the $2 billion that were spent in the state. Now, this, is, this represents uh, new money, which does stimulate the economy in secondary industries and services, or I guess what an economist would refer to as a mm -hmm. basic uh, tourism, and then is a, is a basic industry to, this, to the region. Uh, then so much for the importance of the uh, uh, tourist recreation industry. Next, I'd like to turn to uh, the uh, recreation regions of the state. If we can look at the map, uh, I'll point out this is the same map that is in your text. And I'll be looking, we'll be looking at a series of slides. I wanted to point this out on the map before we start into the slides, so we'll, uh, by way of orientation. Uh, <clears throat> I have identified tourist recreation regions as areas of concentration of tourist activities and recreation activities. I've identified five of these regions in the Ozarks, and certainly they don't include all of the tourist and recreation attractions, but they represent uh, concentrations of these activities. Uh, the first that we'll be looking at is the Interstate 44 region, where a number of tourist attractions have been developed along the interstate. It's not that the attractions are so spectacular. There are some interesting ones there, but uh, simply the volume of traffic here is a major factor in creating this tourist recreation area. Uh, the next one we'll look at is the Lake of the Ozarks region. And of course, the Lake of the Ozarks is the focus for this well-established tourist recreation region. The largest of the regions, we'll look at then the third one, is the Ozark Playground region, which uh, includes not only uh, some large cities such as Springfield and Joplin, but its main focus of attraction is in the Lake District, including lakes like Bull Shoals and Taney Como and Table Rock and Beaver and Grand Lake of the Cherokees in Oklahoma and other lakes. Then we'll look at the Big Springs area, which is a developing tourist recreation area in the interior Ozarks, and then finish up with the uh, St. Francis region, which includes the St. Francis Mountains, uh, the Old Lead Belt, and St. Genevieve. Uh, I have uh, some shots of developing tourist recreation areas such as Dog Patch and the area around Mountain View in Arkansas. If we can have then the first slide, we see here uh, the first of the slides that uh, in the I-44 tourist recreation region, this is Merrimack Caverns. Uh, inside Merrimack Caverns is uh, one of the more spectacular uh, attractions is the, what's known as the Stage Curtains, uh, interesting cave uh, travertine. This uh, next picture you're looking at now is the Jungle Room in Merrimack Caverns. Also has some interesting stalactites and stalagmites. Uh, this material is simply referred to as dripstone or cave travertine. And nearby is uh, the Onondaga Cave. This is a shot of the lily pad room in Onondaga Cave. And uh, the next one has, uh, is the shot of the Cathedral Hall in Onondaga Cave. Of course, uh, these are uh, major attractions in that area. Then if we can look at the first uh, slide for the uh, Lake of the Ozarks region, one of the major attractions in the Lake of the Ozarks region is simply its rugged terrain and there's abundance of open space and wooded hills and steep bluffs such as you see along the meander loop here in the Gasconade River. And in the fall of the year, uh, plenty of good hunting. Uh, during deer season, uh, this region attracts uh, many hunters from Kansas City and St. Louis and even out-of-state hunters. In the spring, we see uh, here a shot of Bennett Springs, opening day. It's a trout hatchery and of course the sport fishermen are out in full strength during uh, the early spring. In the next slide we see Bagnell Dam, which is really the key to uh, this whole tourist recreation region. The dam was constructed in the late 1920s and of course the lake 
provides the focus for much of the tourist development. Uh, one of the most elegant of the tourist recreation resorts on the lake is uh, Tantera. And here we see a view of Tantera. It's a planned tourist recreation uh, development. And uh, in the next picture, we see a rather interesting picture of this at night. Uh, nearby are uh, country music halls, uh, uh, gift shops, and uh, motels, um, amusement parks, uh, which really make uh, US 54 Highway a, a tourist strip development, which in some respects detracts from the beauty of the region. Here we see the state capital at uh, Jefferson City, which is outside the uh, Lake of the Ozarks region, but close by, and annually this attracts a number of tourists uh, to see the capital and the uh, city of Jefferson City. In the next slide, uh, we see another of these outlying tourist attractions. This is at Hermann, Missouri, uh, which is a center for uh, German settlement. And here we see uh, people dressed in the local uh, or in the native costumes of the, uh, of the Germans. Uh, the, the town has interesting architecture and the old uh, wineries are open during the Mai Fest and the Oktoberfest. Uh, the first of the uh, uh, slides for the Ozark Playground Association is uh, a scene of in the National Cemetery at Springfield. Springfield is sort of the um, gateway to this region and it has a number of attractions. The National Cemetery, of course, is where the uh, uh, soldiers who were killed at Wilson's Creek Battle in the Civil War are buried. Uh, the Wilson's Creek Battlefield National Park is south and west of the city. Spring is a good time for a visit to this area and uh, because the dogwood and redbud are in bloom during this season. Likewise in the fall of the year a number of uh, th hundreds, really hundreds of tourists visit this section of the state because of the fall colors particularly blending in with the glade lands. Uh, camping and outdoor activities uh, abound and there are good facilities for group camping such as uh, this scene you see here of Camp Arrowhead near Marshfield, but church camps are also very numerous. Uh, the large springs such as the one that we see in the next slide at uh, Roaring River are not only scenic attractions but also they're good camping locations and a great location for sport fishing at the trout hatchery there. The lakes are the focus for many of the attract attractions. And in this next slide, we see a view of uh, Table Rock, but uh, also the other lakes in that vicinity are major attractions, including the lakes in Oklahoma. I suppose the outstanding attraction of this area is Silver Dollar City, which we see in the next view. Uh, this is an aerial view, and the, area, and the so, city has been expanded uh, considerably since this time. In the same area is Shepherd of the Hills Farm and several country music halls and a, a tourist strip development uh, on Highway 76 between Silver Dollar City and uh, Branson. Uh, at Silver Dollar City we see uh, several um, traditional practices or occupations in the Ozarks that have been preserved. It's developed as a uh, Midwestern Williamsburg or on that theme. Uh, wagon manufacturing is another of the uh, crafts that have been preserved at Silver Dollar City. Uh, in the next slide we see Hollister, which is uh, located on uh, Taney Como Lake across the, the lake from Branson. It was one of the towns that was established after Powersite Dam was built in 1914. It has the English half timber design on the buildings. Uh, there are some sort of offbeat tourist attractions. The mine dumps in the Tri-State District are locations that amateur geologists and history buffs uh, enjoy visiting. Seems that each town has some attraction in the summer months. Uh, one of the more unusual ones is the snake hunt at Chadwick. Um, mostly they catch uh, copperheads and sometimes if they're short of snakes they borrow a few, import a few from Oklahoma. Western diamondbacks are not native to the area but they do show up in the attraction there. But no one really cares because, as you see in the next picture, uh, there's plenty of uh, local country music and uh, ice cream, and uh, the politicians are out gathering votes, and it's, uh, every, everyone has a good time. Uh, 
here we see one of, I suppose, a somewhat controversial tourist attraction at, uh, and this is the Christ of the Ozarks at uh, Eureka Springs, Arkansas. Nearby is an outdoor pavilion where the Passion Play is enacted. The region also has a number of attractive mills, such as you see here at uh, Riverdale on the Finley River, a favorite place for tourists to visit, not only for the scenery, but for the water uh, that's there this, for swimming and for fishing. In the Big Springs area, in the interior Ozarks, I suppose the most uh, popular sport is uh, the float trip. And here we see um, uh, canoes going down the uh, uh, Jack's Fork. The Jack's Fork and Current River have been set aside as part of the National Scenic Riverways, as has the Buffalo River in Arkansas. Now, this is a controversial uh, move. Uh, many of the local residents uh, feel that the area would have been preserved better had it been uh, retained in private, uh, under private control. Uh, these interior Ozark streams are quite attractive, and in the next slide we see uh, there's plenty of room for camping, and uh, the fishing isn't bad, and cooking fish over an open fire attracts a lot of visitors to the area. Uh, it's, they're good swimming streams, and here we see some visitors from Kansas enjoying the tremendously cold water at Blue Springs on the North Fork River. Uh, they, they make good family streams because the rivers, they do have the riffles and they're fun to run, but they're safe and you can walk out of them in most locations. They're quite shallow for the most part. This area has, is being developed now and in the next slide we see the moonshine still that the, forest, or the Park Service has established at Alley Springs. And uh, this is drawing attractions. Nearby is the uh, uh, Bluegrass Festival, which you see a sign here. That this is, takes place around the 4th of July. So the area is beginning to develop as a tourist recreation area. The next region we'll look at is the um, uh, St. Uh, Francis region. And uh, one of the things that's very popular in St. Francis region is, uh, the, uh, is getting out and driving around in the rugged terrain Jeep rallies are very popular at Lesterville. This attracts the all-terrain vehicle enthusiasts uh, almost weekly to this area. Uh, many of them come in from the St. Louis area. Also, other attractions in this area would include the Elephant Rocks, which we see in this picture, uh, hiking and the scenic view from there, the Johnson shut-ins. Uh, Tom Sock Reservoir uh, is a good place, and there is a fine museum there uh, at the reservoir. Uh, here we see um, uh, a mine tour at Bon Terre and a mine museum, which attracts not only the amateur geologist, but also the person that's interested in the history of the old lead belt. Uh, Saint, uh, here we see a view of St. Genevieve, where uh, the French 18th century architecture is preserved, I suppose the best example in the Midwest. There are also interesting old ghost towns uh, in this area. Uh, this is Wittenberg in Perry County, and the, many people enjoy uh, simply traveling and going through these old uh, towns. In the Arkansas Ozarks and in the Boston Mountains, there's really very little in the way of tourist development, but uh, it's an interesting place to drive through. And here we see uh, in the next slide uh, that you can, if you get off the road far enough, find some actual uh, authentic handicraft industries. But you, to find authentic handicraft industries, you really have to get onto the side roads. And uh, south of um, uh, Harrison, there is a developing uh, theme park. Uh, this is Dog Patch with uh, Daisy May and Little Abner and Mary and Sam welcoming the crowd. Uh, this is I suppose the, uh, the main tourist attraction in, that's located actually in the Boston Mountains. In the next view, we see um, one of the popular rides at uh, uh, Dog Patch. This is Earthquake Magoon's uh, uh, Brain Buster, I believe, or Brain Rattler, I, I believe is what they refer to it as. Another area that is developing, and it's outside the other tourist recreation areas, is uh, in the vicinity of Mountain View, Arkansas. Uh, the natural attraction here is uh, Blanchard Springs, which is to the north of Mountain View, and which you see here, and also Blanchard Caverns, which has been developed by the National Park Service. It's one of the most spectacular 
caverns in the Ozarks. Uh, the limitation, I suppose, is the fact that uh, it's located somewhat remote, and uh, as roads are improved into this area, it will undoubtedly develop as a major tourist attraction. Close by, of course, is Mountain View, where the Ozark Folk Center is located. Uh, here, the federal government has spent a substantial amount of money on this development. And in each of these pavilions that you see here are individual handicraft uh, industries, uh, where you can see them, uh, people uh, engaged in manufacturing musical instruments and uh, all sorts of uh, handicrafts that once were important in the area. Uh, one of these is the, uh, in, we see in the next view, uh, a corn shuck doll, uh, or corn husk doll, I guess is the proper word. Uh, but there are a number of these handicrafts in, the, in this area. Uh, manufacturing of lye soap and uh, uh, chairs and baskets and so on. Uh, an interesting as uh, thing about the Ozark uh, Folk Center is that they actually carry on instruction in uh, some of the early day instruments, such as the dulcimer, as you see in this picture. Um, there's also instruction in uh, uh, playing the fiddle. And the fiddler here is a man by the name of Fate Morrison. Uh, and then even some of the more exotic types of uh, musical instruments, uh, here we see people pick and bow, as they, it's referred to. And there's always some type of entertainment uh, at the center uh, square dancing and other types of dancing going on all the time. The, the re, this area is not developed as much uh, commercially as have areas uh, in uh, more accessible regions. In concluding, I think I should say that the tourist recreation industry is not without its drawbacks and in some ways it's uh, controversial because as more people come into the area, and it, it simply means that the tourist recreation resources will be used more intensively. And this is not, uh, not everyone is, is in agreement with this. Uh, it, it follows that deterioration of the resources will simply have to come as more people are using them. You can't have your cake and eat it too. Uh, overdevelopment is also a serious problem as uh, more uh, second home developments are laid out than are actually needed. This destroys some of the habitat and some of the scenic beauty of the area. And of course, as dams and reservoirs are built, these can only be built at the expense of uh, good float streams. This will then conclude my presentation on the tourist recreation industry of the Ozarks. In the next lecture, I have a guest, Dr. William Cheek of the Department of Geography and Geology, and he'll talk about his favorite topic on the Ozarks, manufacturing. For course information concerning land and life in the Ozarks, contact Dr. Milton Rafferty, Department Head, Geography Geology, Southwest Missouri State University, Springfield, Missouri, 65802.